Ryan Reynolds is completely intolerant to unhinged critics of Deadpool and Wolverine and shuts them down with a perfect response. To worsen the situation, this summer's record-breaking Marvel release created a very annoying showdown between Ryan and Disney's top brass, including CEO Bob Iger. The humongous billion-dollar success of Deadpool and the Wolverine should have been cause for celebration. Instead, it has made the biggest controversies ever to make the biggest star weary, Ryan is ready to walk away from Marvel entirely. Deadpool 3 and Wolverine just shook the box office, becoming the biggest Marvel projects in history. The two hits made up a whopping over 1.3 billion, proving to be Marvel's biggest wins outside the core Avengers films. It wasn't just a financial triumph, it was proof that fans are hungry for gritty, R-rated superhero films. And for a brief moment, it seemed like Deadpool had solidified its place as a major force in Hollywood, with Ryan Reynolds and his creative team poised to lead Marvel into a bold new era. You know, I, shockingly, it would be the, the, the fun story would be that Disney was just appalled at everything and Marvel couldn't blend, was never going to let us do anything. But that's on one hand. On the other hand, uh, money. But then, Disney threw a wrench in the works. Instead of reinvesting that massive success into expanding the Deadpool universe, Disney decided to funnel nearly $600 million, almost half of the profits, into diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI projects. And here's where the trouble started. But wait, you might have already guessed that Ryan and his production have issues with the diverse visions of the studio, but it's far from the truth. We have seen Ryan seriously supporting inclusive projects in the past. The problem lies with Disney's folly approach, and recent DEI-focused films like The Little Mermaid remake and Eternals have faced harsh criticism for prioritizing messaging over storytelling. Critics make it the core of their argument and point out that while representation is important, forcing it into projects without organic storytelling will definitely destroy the whole project. Not only critics and fans, but Ryan and his team, including Deadpool 3 director Sean Levy and longtime writing partners Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, also showed serious issues with this approach. Ryan and his crew also feared that Disney's wrong approach would dilute Deadpool's traditional classy taste by shoehorning in themes of social justice and forced diversity. Deadpool's appeal has always been his irreverence, his politically incorrect humor, and his unapologetic take on the superhero genre. Stripping him of that would be a death sentence for the character. And it wasn't just Ryan who was frustrated. Hugh Jackman, who had made his much-anticipated return as Wolverine, was furious as well. He had agreed to come back under the impression that Wolverine and Deadpool would be leading the charge for a grittier, more mature X-Men universe. But instead of building on that vision, Disney was redirecting the earnings to fund remakes like Snow White. For Ryan, this was the last straw, and he started publicly criticizing Disney for not honoring their initial promises. According to him, Disney had pledged that Deadpool's success would lead to an expanded Deadpool universe, and perhaps even a new R-rated branch of Marvel films. But Disney also showed its hypocritical side, hereby completely denying the fair budget sharing for this branch. Even Disney broke promises of budget sharing. But Bob Iger denied any such agreement, claiming that no explicit promise was made to reinvest in Marvel's grittier future. So now, instead of getting excited about what's next for Deadpool, fans are left wondering if Ryan Reynolds is about to walk away for good. He's currently set to appear in up to five upcoming Marvel films, including a Deadpool vs. Wolverine sequel and potential crossovers with the X-Men and Avengers. But he's made it clear. If Disney doesn't shift its priorities back to what made Deadpool successful in the first place, he's done. And honestly, who can blame him? Disney's current trajectory, under Bob Iger's leadership, has prioritized DEI across all its films and TV shows. While that might seem like a noble goal, it's come at the cost of storytelling. Fans don't want a watered-down Deadpool. They don't want Wolverine turning into a PG-13 version of himself. They want the gritty, raw, and hilarious anti-heroes that made them fall in love with the characters in the first place. Yeah, it's it's been the, the best and worst relationship I've ever been in. <laughs> it's 11 years, 11 years I've been trying to get this movie made. And, and then uh, about a year and a half ago, somebody accidentally leaked it on the internet. Was that you? Was that super crazy? Well, yeah. And Ryan isn't shy about expressing his frustrations. In fact, he revealed in an interview that one of his original ideas for Deadpool Deadpool 3, which is a short film where Deadpool interrogates the hunter who killed Bambi's mom. The project was shot down by Disney, only because it was deemed too edgy for Disney's brand. This is exactly the kind of irreverent, dark humor that fans crave from Deadpool, and yet Disney didn't want any part of it. Ryan has also pushed back on Disney's attempts to add more diverse characters for the sake of inclusion. To suffice their inclusion narrative, Disney forced Ryan to include a young, diverse sidekick for Deadpool in Deadpool 3. Look, we accept that there's nothing inherently wrong with adding new characters, but Ryan and his team believed otherwise. They felt that the inclusion of this new character was more about ticking a diversity box than serving the story. 
They shot it down, but the message was clear. DEI is Disney's top priority, even if it risks alienating core audiences that help them make billions of dollars. And it's not just Deadpool that's feeling the pressure. Across Disney's entire portfolio, projects like Willow and Strange World, which were heavily promoted as DEI-focused stories, have struggled to perform. We can easily exemplify the Haunted Mansion reboot, because this was also another major release with a diverse cast and progressive themes. The result was the one of biggest flops at the box office. Despite these setbacks, Bob Iger seems to further inject DEI brainlessly pouring even more resources into initiatives that are terrible, failing to attract the audiences. Ryan is an intelligent face in Hollywood and sees this as a critical moment for Marvel's future. In the crucial time when many original Avengers stepping back and Marvel's Phase 4 films receiving some fearful reviews, Deadpool is a cool offer to rethink and reshape the franchise the way fans want. So Ryan has a plan for his projects. Keep Deadpool true to his roots and use his success to bring the X-Men back into the spotlight, creating a darker, more mature universe that can coexist with Marvel's more family-friendly content. In fact, this has already worked for him, but Disney is infamous for a reason, and its leadership isn't having it at all. They not only countered Ryan's ideas stupidly, but also came up with silly suggestions that lean heavily into inclusive storytelling. Things like focusing on diverse ensemble casts, adding social justice themes, and softening Deadpool's controversial humor. And honestly, this is where the real drama begins. Because um, the movies, these movies in particular, they're made, you know, I think fairly by superhero standards, superhero movie standards, quite responsibly. I mean, we pride ourselves on finishing on time, on budget or under budget, and, you know, delivering the movie um, exactly how- Ryan isn't backing down. In fact, he's reportedly reached out to other key players in the Marvel Universe, like those behind the Blade reboot and Daredevil, Born Again, to rally support for a separate space within Marvel for more mature content. Together, they believe they can convince Disney to create an R-rated branch of Marvel films that would allow franchises like Deadpool to thrive without being compromised by the DEI agenda. But so far, Bob Iger doesn't even care about it, and so far, he has resisted. Now, the most interesting thing in this scenario is that he fears that creating a separate space for more mature content could create a split identity within the Marvel brand. Disney is now at a crossroads where its commitment to DEI is clashing with its need to keep billion-dollar franchises like Marvel profitable. Ryan's logic is simple. Disney's relentless push for DEI has not been the success story the studio wanted. But what do to with executives like Bob Iger, who unstoppably promote DEI as the future of Disney's growth? However, the reality is that this vision is causing the company to lose a huge portion of its fan base, which means losing billions of dollars every year. Just to give a wake-up call to Disney, franchises that were once untouchable, like Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar, have already witnessed the worst night that they couldn't even imagine just because of injecting wokeism into everything. Films like Eternals and Strange World are prime examples of DEI projects that failed to resonate with audiences. The reason is not fans' hate for their so-called diversity, but it's the narratives that feel forced and disconnected from the core values that made these franchises successful in the first place. For many fans, DEI is promoted in Hollywood just for marketing purposes, and not for pure purpose. Now, it has become Disney's hobby to reshape its classic characters and stories to fit a woke standard. Now, most critics argue that Disney is turning its back on the very audiences that helped it become a cultural powerhouse. Now, Disney is in a situation where it promotes everything that fans hate and doesn't like to include what fans love. Disney's insistence on this approach could very well spell trouble for the future of its biggest franchises, especially if fans continue to walk away.